Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week at everything you need to know in 90 seconds to 9 o'clock. With news, the Chinese bond market is giving opposing signals. But first in Frankfurt, the ECB has decided to reduce the pace of its bond buying from 60 billion euros per month to 30 billion euros per month, starting in January 2018. This is the start of the ECB's unwinding and comes more than four years after the US Fed started along the same path. The ECB move comes as it raises its forecast for growth in the Eurozone for 2018 to 2.2%. That would be the fastest rate in 10 years, but it's still a long way from moving off its 0% policy rate and its 0.4% negative deposit rate. In the US, pending home sales, that's deals done but not yet closed, are slipping. In fact, they're now at their lowest level since January 2015, 3.5% below a year ago, and have fallen on an annual basis in five of the past six months. This comes after the effects of the recent storms that have affected the market, and the lower end especially. High-priced housing, over half a million dollars, is seeing strong growth and strong activity. In Mexico, they posted a larger trade deficit in September than expected. Imports are growing faster than exports there. But it is their trade with the U.S. that is behind the shift. Exports to the U.S. grew just 1.1%, while exports to the rest of the world grew by more than 15%. China's $2 billion bond sale has been done, and the yields achieved are just a little higher than U.S. Treasuries. These five-year bonds were sold at a price to yield 2.196%, or just 0.15% over comparable U.S. Treasuries. That is being touted by officials as a sign of investor confidence in the financial health of China's economy. But confidence in their bond market may not last. Chinese government bond futures slumped and yields surged on reports that financial regulators plan to impose stricter controls on borrowing by commercial banks in their interbank market, the main source of short-term funding for financial institutions and the biggest trading platform for bonds. Yields on their 10 years are now over 3.8% and markets expect them to be over 4% relatively soon. Holders are facing significant and quick price drops, that is big price losses. In Australia, Fonterra is now their largest dairy company. Rival Murray Goulburn is on the block and although Fonterra is a bidder, it will probably lose out to the Canadian company Saputo. But, there are expectation, but those expectations are spurring Fonterra on across the ditch with substantial new investment and hundreds of farmer, hundreds more farmer suppliers. The prize is capacity to supply Asia, something that's not growing fast enough in New Zealand. In New York, the US Treasury 10-year yield is holding at 2.45%. The price of crude oil is marginally high today and now just under $52.50 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just under $59 a barrel. The price of gold is unchanged at $1,272 an ounce. And the Kiwi dollar has slipped slightly from this time yesterday, now at 68.5 US cents. On the cross rates, we're unchanged against the Aussie at 98, or sorry, 89.2 Aussie cents, but we made a tiny gain against the euro at 58.5 euro cents. That puts the TWI virtually unchanged at 71.6. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9 brought to you by interest.co.nz.